Hello and welcome to another Malware Forensic Analysis video. In our last video we built a Android app and we ran it through an online service called Bangle which uh, wrapped it in some, some levels of uh, security and obfuscation. In today's video we're going to take a look at running that application and seeing if we can dump it out of the Android device. Um, rather than try and hook a debugger directly into the running process, we're going to try and extract it from um, from uh, outside of the actual emulator itself. I know just from uh, playing around a couple of times with uh, some of the samples uh, that have been packed with Bankle that it uses anti-debugging techniques, so it spins up as well as uh, starting the main process, it starts up uh, two or three um, uh, uh, PROC, um, ptrace processes and attaches it to the running process, uh, reaching the, the overall limit of, of how many uh, you can attach to a process. Therefore, uh, it crashes out when we try and attach a debugger to that particular process. Uh, what we're going to um, what we're going to be using is uh, on uh, my GitHub account. I've got uh, a repository that is uh, just based on Android Forensics. It uses uh, a combination of Lime and Volatility underneath the hood, um, uh, and I've got a wrapper script that that sits around that just to to cut down the length of some of these commands that we run. So we're primarily going to be using uh, Volatility. For uh, doing the actual analysis of the dump, uh, volatility comes with some ARM plugins already that we could use. Uh, we're also going to be generating our well, we've also generated our own plugin um, as part of this um, to be able to hook uh, into the actual emulator and download the the memory dump so that we can put it into volatility. We need a kernel module called Lime. Uh, now Lime's really cool. The only thing, the only uh, maybe downside to it is that uh, since it's a kernel module, it has to be cross-compiled for your exact kernel. So what we've had to do uh, in in this particular exercise, we tried. I tried following this this volatility um, uh, tutorial uh, for how to kind of set things up um, for Android devices. Unfortunately, this this must be out of date because it didn't really seem to work. Um, you end up having to spin up an emulator, um, copy out, find out the the exact um, version and commit git commit uh, that that emu that that uh, kernel is at. You then have to download the source code for the Android kernel for for that particular emulator device. You have to wind it to that exact git commit, compile it. You then have to download Lime, cross compile it for that for that kernel, making sure that you've compiled that kernel with um, custom uh, kernel modules enabled. Otherwise, you won't be able to attach Lime to, to that kernel when it's done. And uh, when all of that's cross compiled, so when Lime's cross compiled, your output for that is uh, a loadable kernel module. But you also get a system maps that you can then create a plugin for volatility. Uh, I'm not going to go through those stages. It's all documented in uh, this this uh, this graduate's thesis that I found. This seems to be the only instructions that I found that actually work. Uh, this uh, thesis I'll put a link to it in in the show notes. But it's about practical infeasibility of Android smartphones live forensics. And uh, I think on the second page of his contents, he's got a compile line volatility and, and goldfish kernel. And goldfish kernel is the the uh, kernel used for the emulator. So this this is a really good uh, really good find. So if you do want to build this, and you don't want to use um, don't want to use what I've got on Git already, maybe because my kernels are out of date or or they don't work on your emulator. Then you know that's that would be my first point that I would follow. Um, so as I said, in here, in in this Git repository, we have uh, we have our um, 
custom kernel uh, that's been compiled to allow for um, kernel modules to be added. We've got our line kernel module and uh, we've, we've also um, packaged up the system.map file that comes out of cross-compiling line and we've created a volatility plugin which we'll start to use but I mean that there's there's far more that we can do with other volatility plugins as well um, so let's let's uh, let's jump into this and uh, start using it so the main um, uh, the main uh, script that I've got is Python scripts so um, and just passing it up a minus H will kind of tell you what what we've got going on here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, run a minus T task and we're going to start the emulator. I've automated this because you've got to adapt the spin up the emulator. Oh sorry, although it uses the, the actual emulator command uh, within Android Studio to spin up this, this emulator, you have to pass it a load of options so that it'll run that custom kernel. Um, so that's going to take a little while to spin up. While it's doing that, let's jump over and have a look at the script. Okay, so we've got a few options uh, in, in this script. Um, after we start the emulator, we're going to deploy our app. So our app has been dropped um, that was compiled and packaged during the last uh, video has been dropped into the My App folder. So it's this one here. So we're going to deploy that. We're then going to run Lime and what that will do is it will um, delete any dump files that we've currently got in here. So we have got one in here. Let's Let's delete that. Yeah, I'll well, tell you what, we'll let the script do it. Um, so there's that dump file there. It then pushes the uh, file for the um, for the Lime kernel module onto the device, onto the SD card. It then uh, sets up TCP uh, forwarding, and that's so that we can stream the, uh, the dump of the memory from this device to our device. You could potentially drop it onto the SD card, um, the SD cards on these by default are really small. You'll never get a dump pop straight on those by on on its default size. You've also got to go through the the rigmarole of having to copy it off and onto your workstation for further analysis. And if you've got any malware that affects your SD cards, you've also got the added um, the added issue that it could be um, it could be in infecting your dump. So there's there's no option to do on there. That's good. Uh, it then runs through and it installs that file on the SD card as a, a kernel module, and it tells it to you know start streaming in line format uh, to that that TCP port that's being forwarded, and then we use netcat to attach to that local port and we just dump that that file contents to um, to this line.dump file system, and then we've got some volatility commands that we'll take a look at in a minute. So let's load our app in. So we want to deploy app. <coughs> so all these tasks take a bit longer um, because this is this is actually emulated as a, an ARM architecture. So it's a lot quicker to use x86, but some of the functions um, that I use I, I use in, in other videos to kind of uh, interrogate that dump, uh, shoving it into into IDA or or pulling the depth files out of uh, certain uh, processes, I kind of need it in an ARM format so I can use some ARM plugins. Okay, so that's that's um, deployed. Let's run that app. So we'll need it running for it to uh, be dumped out of memory. So this is all unpacked now in memory. Let's trigger our network string. Okay, that's good. And let's also just double check that it's working. So I think we need 
doing uh, CPU okay. okay, so that, that app is still working. Um, so let's run live and we'll see what it pulls out of RAM. Okay, looks like the dump file's been deleted. And the dump file's been recreated, so it's dumping now. I'm just in that dump directory now, and now I just want to have a look and see how big that, that file is getting. So it's, uh, it's taking a while, it's... Uh, Gonna be probably about 750 meg in size. Let's um, let's have a look at the script while that's while that's dumping. I mean, if needs to be, we can we can use another dump that I've got to do some interrogation just to show that it's actually dumping it out. But, uh, so the next command that we're going to be looking at, uh, so it runs the. It basically runs a volatility command, uh, so it needs volatility installed in the local directory. So this is not included in the in the Git repository, so that's a prerequisite that you'll have to do. Um, so you'll have to dump your your volatility installed somewhere, and then if you just update this variable at the top um, here so that it knows where to find your volatility install. Uh, also, if you're using a um, different emulator and you're using different names there, you can update it there. If you want dump file dump somewhere else as well, you, because you know maybe you've got uh, a larger hard disk somewhere else and you're, you're using particularly large dumps from you know a very up-to-date and, and modern device, then you can update your dump there as well. And if you're running on a device other than the Mac and your home directory for the SDK is installed elsewhere, then you, um, then you can update that because it's going to need to know where emulator is and ADB is to do some, some tasks to deploy the app and start the emulator. Um, so yeah, the volatility uh, command, it'll run volatility, it will say um, load these additional plugins and it will load the additional plugins that we've got in this plugins uh, directory here that we created specifically for goldfish and it will then say load the, the dump that we've got and use the profile for the plugin that we that we specified uh, you can run other plugins as well across this dump there are some other really handy ones as well and it lets us run some parameters and then the next command after that is pretty much the same one but it, I've just kind of uh, cut it down so that uh, I've specified um, a dump directory for dumping out the processes this is quite a handy one if you don't want to copy it into something else such as such as IDA or into a tool that you can then start searching for the DEX, um, the DEX file within that process for then further analysis and I think this should be done shortly. It'll probably get to about 716 May. So I'm not entirely sure I've got much more than that in this device. Okay, so that's changed. I think it's finished dumping at 760 meg. Cool. So let's run volatility and we'll run uh, the parameter. We'll just have a quick look at what options we get with this plugin. So these are all of the options we get with the Goldfish plugin. Uh, it's actually quite limiting. So there, there's far more plugins that you can use elsewhere that are very much specific to the DEX files that are going to be within these processes. Let's have a little look and see um, if the stump has been able to get the process this. Okay, so we've got the process list. Uh, we've got a couple of Android shell processes. 
um, which makes sense. So you probably probably one of these is going to be pretty much zero in size, I would have thought, because um, it might just be starting those P trace processes and then clicking into the other main process. So let's uh, let's not waste too much time. Let's just dump out. Uh, Double check on that command is first. Yeah, he's done. Okay, so we're just going to dump out those processes and we'll just, just have a very quick look in this video, and any further analysis will have to be done in another video. Okay, so that should have. Um, <coughs> So in here we should have some um, Android processes, which shell. Uh, so that one is zero bytes. Um, don't really see there being that much in that one. Um, this looks like a good candidate to, to look at initially. You know, the actual unpacked payload could potentially be in something else. Um, as you know, we saw a lot of those namings change before. So what we'll do is we'll just copy that over to our Windows box where we do our analysis. We'll have a quick look at this in a hex editor. Um, so Uh, yeah, we're not going to get anything in here, I don't think. Okay, so we're not going to get anything in there. Let's see if we can see anything in either. Well, it's picked up that it's an ARM ELF file. Um, so we would definitely have to try and interrogate this. And yeah, I don't think we're going to get an awful lot out of this. Um, so we'd have to interrogate this to try and find the DEX file uh, where it starts in its memory. It's not too difficult to do. There are some scripts online um, that can look for uh, the, the uh, sort of fingerprints that are the start of the DEX file and then extract it. I don't think this is going to show us a lot because the juicy content will be in the DEX file. Yeah, we'd have to pull out the DEX file, which is fair enough. So in this uh, video, we've demoed the uh, scripts that we've uh, that, that I've pulled together for uh, automating the spinning up of uh, an emulator using a custom kernel. Uh, we've then uh, deploy, deployed our uh, packed app to this emulator and executed it. We've uh, then uh, used Lime uh, to hook in as a custom kernel module and then dump out memory to, to our local host. And then we've used volatility with a custom plugin that we've created to list the processes and to dump out those processes from the main uh, dump file. And that can all then be used in future processes for stripping out the DEX file and then repeating the processes that we showed in the other video for confirming that that, that DEX file is the unpacked version of this app. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments please do place them below and feel free to show or like any of these videos and channels thank you very much for watching